striking. Move. Make a fight. Hi Tribe and welcome to this new video in which I want to share with you some new knife combat drills. Uh, the difference is that in this episode I want, also in the past I was making this but separately, in this video I want also to come with some explanations based on the human body anatomy and also physiology. So I am not only showing you some techniques but I will explain to you also why we are making that and what are the effects when you are striking in that uh, zones, in that specific area. I was posting a few days ago on my Facebook Tactical Combat uh, System page some uh, diagrams in which I was drawing uh, uh, some techniques and drills and give some explanation based on the anatomy of the human body about that specific attacks. And uh, this uh, post was having a very, very good feedback from the majority of my uh, followers and I want from this moment to come also with this kind of explanation. At the beginning I was thinking that the majority of people wants to see only the drill and they don't want to pass that idea, maybe it's seeming boring, why we are striking there, what are the effects when we are striking in that area. But because it was having a good feedback, now I will mix these two so you will have more knowledge and you understand better why we are doing that kind of strikes. So guys, it's very important to understand the tactical combat system, the system that I'm teaching, is based on many elements. And it's not enough only to repeat mechanically one drill or more drills and that's all. It's not enough that you are going to your uh, gym, to your dojo, where you have your instructor and you repeat mechanically what the instructor is teaching you. Analyzing and trying to understand why I make that movement, why I'm striking in that particular area, what is happening when I'm striking in that particular area. It's very important that you advance and you can create that system that can help you in a real life or that situation. Because if my instructor is showing me to cut, uh, I don't know, to give 10 slashes on the hand or I don't know in which, on the muscles, in which kind of areas, but in reality, I don't understand what is the reaction of the human body, what is happening in that moment in a real situation, and that with this kind of slashes, with this kind of strikes, I will not stop the aggressor from his action, and he will continue, yeah? I cut his uh, arm, I don't know, his biceps, he can move the uh, knife in the other hand, he can move it from one to one hand, he can still operate, he can still attack. Yeah, if I don't understand these kind of things, then I repeat mechanically and program my brain to operate like that. And in a real situation, I will have the surprise that the drill that I'm performing, even if I'm making these techniques, and even if it's very hard, you have a target that has unpredictable movements. And when you say that I'm cutting only the, I don't know, the tendons inside the muscles, it's a very complicated discussion because you are in a fight and your target is moving. It's not this bomb mannequin that is staying in this place and I'm striking in the eye and that it's over. So understanding what are the reactions, how the body is reacting when I'm striking in one particular area, then I will understand also if that technique that I'm performing and repeating, 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 it will be efficient or no. So in my opinion, having some basic knowledge about the human body anatomy is fundamental in study this kind of skill of using the blade, the tool, the blade, 
to, I don't know, create the distance, the time, so you can invade or apply other kind of tactics or eliminate the, the target. So I want to underline again that in tactical combat system, we are using the knife only in the situations in which is requiring use of deadly force. As an example, I give you again the same one I was telling you many times, but it's the most clearly to make yourself an imagination exercise. Paris, a terrorist was entering a few years ago with a knife in a church and begin to stab persons and kill five, five six persons. So that is a type of situations, situation in which I must use my knife to protect my life, my family and the ones around me and to eliminate the target. I am not talking about, I don't know what, conflict in the traffic or I don't know what kind of verbal conflict that it's transforming, it's evolving in a hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and you take the knife and you stab uh, the other, the target, yeah? Because there we talk about other things, yeah? I am talking about use of deadly force. And again, why is it important that we have some basic anatomy knowledge, human anatomy knowledge? Because if I am in that life or death situation and I must use my knife to protect my life, the ones around me or my family, means that I must be fast, precise to eliminate the target or to, I don't know, to apply my techniques in such a way that I can evade, yeah, if I am alone. So by not knowing where on the human body, what kind of areas I need to strike to be efficient in my techniques. I can stay there to give 10 strikes in places on the body that will not affect my target and he will continue to do also his action. So my role, my goal, again I repeat in tactical combat system, is not fighting with the blade. It's using this tool to create the space and the distance to evade or to apply other kind of tactics, of, of, of course, to eliminate uh, very fast the target if the situation is permitting me. Yeah? So knowing uh, basic uh, human anatomy is fundamental if you want to be efficient and if you want that you increase your chances to survive in a real situation. So guys, I will start with the first drill and I use for this drill an improvised knife that I was creating in such a way that I don't destroy my training done. I want to underline again that these are drills, are simple drills. Of course that in reality it will not be like this. Yeah? I have a fixed target on which I repeat and exercise different kind of techniques. Why? To program my brain to have a response in a real situation. The drills can have also other goals, for example, the goal to increase your speed, to increase your precision. But of course, is something different from reality. In reality, my target will have unpredictable movements. And if here I am striking very fast, very precise on the zone, on the eye, in reality, it will not be so simple because my target, it will move. But what I am doing now is programming the brain to learn this kind of movement. Again, I repeat very fast the main elements of tactical combat system. Yeah? Tactical combat system, the system that I am teaching is based on simplicity and efficiency. And the main elements are awareness, being able to identify in time potential threats. Second one, being able to deploy fast your weapon because you will not be on the street all the time with a knife going like this. Yeah, you will have it in your pocket, you will have it in appendix position or other kind of uh, carry positions. Then three, being able to strike fast. That is coming also with four, being able to strike precise. It's not enough to strike price uh, fast, I must strike also precise. And the last one, movement. Fixed target is dead target. So all these main elements are part of all the drills that I'm showing you and that are in the methodology of tactical combat system. So guys, I will start now to show you the first uh, drill, but from already striking position. And then we'll combine it with deployment. As you already know, because I was making so many videos showing you the deployment, I'm a fan of the appendix position. I can deploy it very fast and strike from that position because also when I carry, for example, a handgun, it will be in appendix position in the right side and more in the left, you'll have the knife. So basically, I will do the same movement with the left hand 
or if I must deploy with one hand, uh, the same pattern of movement, yeah? Nothing is changing, only the grip, yeah? The knife is something different, the gun is something different. But now I will start to show you from the striking position and then we combine with the deployment and of course with movement because all these are part of our drills. So if I am here in front of uh, the, the dummy, the exercise, the target, we must understand that these techniques that I am showing you must have the two main elements. I was saying another two before that is that are deployment and movement that we put after, but another two are striking fast and striking precise. Because when we talk about anatomical uh, and physiological uh, knowledge, we must understand that for striking that point that can create lead to the, to the death of the target or I don't know, incapacitate the target, we must have precision. And when we are talking about a real situation in which my aggressor, for example, it's in my front and it's already focused on me, the chances that I will be so precise are are less because he's aware of my movements and he will not be like in this position a static target. Okay, when we are talking about an ambush or a surprise attack is something else. For example, imagine that somebody is entering in the bus, I don't know, a terrorist is entering in the bus and is beginning to stab the people and you are coming from behind, for example. So that is an ambush, it's a surprise attack, so you can deliver much easier your strikes because he is not focused on you. He has the awareness uh, focused in other directions, so you can perform your uh, deliver your strike more precise yeah but if i have it in my front means that when i will make a movement he will also have his reaction it's true reaction is lower than the action but also imagine that if you are for example in the situation in which i am staying in this place and i am having the knife in my appendix position now let's say the door from the bus it's open or I don't know in where I am in a bar or somewhere and this is entering very fast and it's in this distance near me means that I must have a reaction to his action yeah so being precise is very important and precise means not this that all the time I'm striking in his eye on a fixed target this is only learning the drill then if you want to develop your precision Put a tennis ball, only an example like I was giving you only also in the past and I have some videos in which I show you this. Put a tennis ball, tie it very good with a rope and begin to strike it with the knife, yeah? And the ball it will move continuously and you must strike it. So making this kind of exercise, it's one of the exercises that can increase your precision, yeah? It's not enough only to have a fixed target and make this exercise and say look how fast and precise I am because in reality your target will move yeah so I will start now with the first uh, drill and I will show you different kind of variants but basically this drill is based on the same movements only that I am choosing other parts zones of the uh, head because here we are talking head and neck that I choose to strike so basically we start from this position. I am not uh, now telling you that in reality you will be in another position. You can be on the chair, you can be there. I'm only showing you a principle that you can implement in your drills and in your scenarios. So the technique is from here, I'm going straight with my knife, entering at the level of the eye, enter straight in the eye. After I'm entering in the eye and taking the knife back, I am moving a little bit in the lateral and then entering with my knife in the lateral of the neck stabbing in the lateral of the neck and then entering very deep with the blade and then only yanking dragging the blade towards me yeah so basically it's one two three now i'm showing you only the the part of this arm what is doing the role then we come also with this because it has also his own role yeah we come with the technique together i only show how we are hitting and where in such a way that i also explain why 
I can only strike at the eye and move, of course. I can only strike to the neck and move, of course. Strike the trachea, creating space. It will be, it can be enough, the shock that I create with that strike to stop him from his action. Why I am striking the eye? I am striking the eye because the eye is a soft tissue. And if you are penetrating it deep enough and hard enough, it will create a powerful sh shock that it will stop him for a limited amount of time from his action. And I give you an example. If I'm coming with power towards you to catch you, to do, to do something, and you suddenly stick your fingers very hard, very powerful in my eye, it will hurt very bad. And also the reaction it will be this, yeah? It will happen, it, it was happening for sure to many of you, this in your life, and you know how painful it is to have the fingers in your eyes, and also what kind of reaction you will have. Now imagine the same concept but somebody trusting the blade in your eye very deep penetrating in the orbit yeah so of course that that type of strike it will be a shock strike how we name it in tactical combat system they are placed zones that they are shock zones so these shock zones are stopping the aggressor the target for a limited amount of time from his action and that i needed yeah that is why I'm striking that zone? Because I want to create the space distance to uh, uh, apply other kind of tactics to evade or, I don't know, to eliminate after uh, the target. Of course, I can choose to make, if I can, the best technique to eliminate it from the beginning. If I can, again, I repeat if the situation is permitting. But this drill is like this. So what I am doing, I am coming directly on the eye. I repeat that in tactical combat system, we don't have more than one, two strikes, maybe three, but we, we don't stay there, it's too much time, yeah? So the perfect thing is to strike and move, yeah? Or to strike two times and move, yeah? So I'm striking at the level of the eye, penetrating his eye. And here, talking about anatomy, you must understand that the orbit of the skull, where the eye is uh, situated, it's having a conic sphere. So when you are entering with that knife, that conic sphere is helping directing the knife towards a very, very thin uh, place uh, uh, that is separating from the brain. Yeah. So that part of the skull, if you are breaking it, you can penetrate the brain. It will die if you are penetrating the eye? No. It will die if you are penetrating into the brain? No. So the chances that there it's, he is dying are very low. Maybe if you are entering deep enough and sectionated the carotid artery that is coming, it's better to sectionate that you have more access to it from the neck yeah, than the, the skull. So it's not... The possibility that you are killing it in that moment is not so high. Yeah? There are few places in the brain that you can strike and hit in such a way that he will die. And the most sure is the brain stem. And we will discuss about this uh, much later. But there are so many cases in, to, in which people were stabbed in the eye, in the lateral of the, sky, the skull, in the front of the skull, I don't know, in different kinds of parts of the brain, per penetrating the brain, affecting the brain, but they didn't die. The majority were also aware and in good uh, state of physiological state. Of course, all these damages that I am making to the brain, if I manage to pass through the skull, will affect. Okay, his uh, he he will affect him in the future. Yeah, because every part the the, the brain is split in more uh, zones, and every zone is in charge with some activities. Some with the memory, some with intelligence, with speaking, with vision, with uh, equilibrium, with many, many things. The brain stem is responsible with the breathing, with the heartbeats. So this is the reason why when you sectionate it, he will uh, die. Because the most important things that the body is surviving, it is like the central command of the body, yeah? the brain stem.
but it's very hard to hit that place we will talk we will talk a little bit much later so why i am striking the eye because it's a shock uh, zone because he will stop the aggressor in that uh, moment for a limited amount of time for his action yeah so i am striking the eye and then i am coming in the laterally moving a little bit my body coming in the laterally with a very powerful and deep strike to the neck yeah in such a way that when i'm striking in the neck then i am dragging the knife towards me back why i'm dra dragging the knife like this because as you already know and i was showing you also in the past we have in the lateral left and right the uh, carotid arteries and the jugular veins but that are not so important because the veins are low pressure blood vessels we are aiming for the arteries because they are uh, high pressure and when you are, uh, you are when you lacerate them uh, the amount of, the, of blood that he will lose uh, it will be much bigger and much faster it will lose because it's coming with more pressure so we have the carotid arteries and by inserting the knife inside and dragging towards me what i'm doing i'm trying also to lacerate that arteries yeah on this part for example if i am talking attacking on this part so i have two options one that is a striking shock one that is not a striking shock if i'm lacerating the artery it will not stop him from his action maybe it can happen because of uh, emotional thing he's seeing blood he uh, is aware and understand that he was cut and he's thinking that he will die and maybe he will stop there and uh, he is not continuing his activity but the majority because of the adrenaline because maybe they are under the influence of the alcohol or drugs or i don't know what other substances they can continue their actions and it's taking like 30 seconds 30 uh, 60 seconds depending on the situation and how it's lacerated the important blood vessels of the artery that he is losing conscience and few minutes three four minutes until he's losing the amount of blood and to that is leading to death yeah so this laceration is not a shock one so even if i am lacerating if i'm choosing only to lacerate i am entering inside the trachea i was showing you in the past and i will show you also now penetrating near the trachea and then dragging the blade with the blade towards me in such a way that i sectionate that trachea uh, that um, uh, carotid artery means that I deliver him a very dangerous strike that will lead to his death, but not in that moment. He's continuing to fight. He can stab me also. He can do other kind of things. But by striking at the level of the eyes, going there inside, this is a shock strike that is stopping him at least for a few minutes. I don't know so many cases in which somebody can still fight at the same, uh, at the same uh, I don't know, performance being stabbed and having a blade in your eyes. You are being stabbed in your eye and maybe also because of the power you penetrate uh, the skull entering a little bit in the brain. So by creating this kind of strike, I create a shock to him that it will give me the advantage of creating space, time and apply other kind of tactics. Yeah. This is the reason why I'm not going first to the neck, slashing the trachea, because even if I'm doing this, he will make also his own things. Yeah, It's not a shock, but here, immediately how that blade is penetrating the eye for that limited amount of time, I was giving him a shock strike. So I have the blade now. Uh, in the appendix position and we are using the same technique like all the time I am showing to you from here the hand is liberating the shirt I am catching the knife and then I can strike with it so what I am doing this hand is going on the shirt liberating the knife I am catching it with the other hand and from this position this hand is going on his face yeah I am not hitting very hard it's not like I am punching it I want to strike him because if I give a powerful strike, he will move his balance and move back. Yeah? This is only a short strike, only to take his 
sight in the moment in which I'm coming very fast with my blade. So it's basically this, yeah. I am taking the shirt, catching my blade, and when I catch, I only come with the palm, with all the palm on his face, yeah. Taking for a short fraction of second the vision in such a way that after I am going directly with the knife. So the first thing is this. So after I am making this kind of strike and coming with a knife, the next thing I am making this strike, striking at the level of the eye, I can come also by picking, yeah, there are different kind of methods, one is, this is a tall guy, so I'm coming directly like this, but you can come also like from up, down, like picking with the blade. <coughs> So what I am doing now, I am hitting, striking at the level of the eye, then the next thing is that I am coming with the blade in the neck, dragging it towards me. all this combined with movement. If I was making this cutting, now of course I will create movement after the strike. So again, easy, the deployment, it must not be the drill like this. I am showing you again the principle, you can adapt it how you want. Yeah, so I have the blade in the appendix position, taking, liberating the blade, catching with the other hand, this from this position is going on his face, cover his face, giving a little strike to the face in such a way that I take the vision. Not very powerful because I don't need him to go back to move his balance and going back. I am only taking his side for a short time and in this moment I am coming directly towards the eye. Yeah? So I have one, two entering on the eye. After I'm making this, I am of course moving a little bit my body in diagonal, stabbing powerful in the interior of the neck and dragging my hand towards me. And of course I can also move in the same time because I'm not remaining there. Again, I repeat, I'm not making all these techniques and staying here because as I say to you, maybe I was not able, because he was moving a little bit, to hit the eye and my knife is passing. Then when I enter in the neck, the same, maybe I'm not sectioning exactly what I need. So when I am dragging and I remain in the same place, basically he can fight at the same level, standards. So I will be also stab or I don't know what uh, kind of things he's doing, yeah? So by making this kind of movement, I'm entering in the eye, then entering in the neck, dragging and then I'm creating distance. If you have a very powerful and very powerful, very sharp blade, when you are entering in the lateral of the neck, not only that you can sectionate the carotid artery and also jugular vein, but also you can section it the trachea, yeah? So depending also on the tool that you are having for your uh, daily care, yeah? If it's a folding knife that every time you are cutting all the objects and all the things with it and it's not sharp anymore and it has a blade like this, of course it will be very hard to create the damage that you need to stop this target or to eliminate it. So from this side, the same thing, I am going on the knife, 
again i am repeating to you i am only showing you the principle of this technique of course if i have somebody here so close and i'm already in a in that moment of using deadly force i'm not going from this position to take my blade because i remain uncovered on very important uh, areas and vital areas yeah so this i am showing you also for only for this build to know how you can put it in a complex and complete drill yeah with deployment or with moving and all this yeah so what i am doing i am going on the knife and liberating the blade going catching with the other hand the blade and from this position because my hand is already dragging the shirt up i am only going to his face from here yeah so i'm taking the blade going up to his face so first thing is this yeah again nice strike it's not like boom, i want to punch to give some powerful punches i only want to give that step on the face in such a way that I take his vision. I don't need to disequilibrate him and that is moving his uh, body back and also moving, stepping back. So I'm deploying the knife, striking at the level of the face, taking the vision, coming with the knife. I have two possibilities, coming straight directly to the eye or picking. Uh, depending on the situation you can make the the boat so from here i'm striking at the level of the eye moving if you see i am moving my body also when i'm striking i am already moving my body i'm not striking exactly from this position again your target has unpredictable movements he will not remain in the same position only like an idea to understand that you will not be able to make from the same position all the techniques you all the time must move your body in accordance with the target movement in such a way that you reach your uh, zones that you want to aim so i'm having one and already when i'm striking i'm coming in the lateral why i'm coming in the lateral because it's more easy to strike from here because it's on the same line to go with my knife than to go like this to move my body and also it's much better because now when I need to strike at the neck I am in a good position if I am here I must strike to the neck go with my hands in a position like this and to strike but here when I was striking I already am in diagonal so I must only enter very fast inside the neck and then dragging the blade slashing lacerated lacerating that carotid and jugular vein and maybe the trachea very important when i make this kind of techniques even if the eye is a soft tissue and even at the neck if the majority of the part of the neck is soft tissue okay the trachea the uh, uh, vertebral spine it's not the eye uh, so soft i must use the finger i put the finger as a stopper because the eye is soft but when i'm sh i'm striking my target and maybe i don't have the right precision when he's moving it's possible that i hit a strong bone of his skull yeah for example the cheekbone or for example the forehead that is very very uh, strong and then if i'm not having the thumb and i hit with power it's possible depending on the blade maybe it doesn't have this guard this tuba and my hand maybe i have it's rain maybe I'm, i have sweat on my hands maybe i have blood doesn't matter it can happen to slide my blade from my hand cutting my hand and also losing the knife from my hand if i give it power it can go from my hand because it's sliding yeah so I need that blade very secure. So when I'm striking, I am coming with the thumb finger there like a stopper. Here the same the neck. I am going inside, but I have the thumb finger put it there. Then I drag. Very, very powerful. My training dummy doesn't have it without hands and all this. But you must understand that when I'm closing the distance, between me and the target, I'm trying also 
because this is a technique in which I try to have him near me in such a way that it's not, if it's moving, if it's creating space, if I'm giving this very hard or I don't, am, I'm not able to catch him, it's creating distance, so my strike, if he is moving, I cannot reach it from this distance anymore, okay? I can step and step back, but it's other kind of technique. So for this reason, it's also very important when I perform the technique and I'm making my strike, if I can, to grab, yeah? I grab him by the arm, I grab him by the closest, by the back, and then come and slash him the neck because I, I want him there, yeah? All these things have also the other part, the bad part. The bad part is that I'm striking, I'm catching, I'm striking, and he also can do the same thing. He can also catch me near him. And we know, and I uh, underline this again, that we need also movement. I don't need myself to remain there. Yeah? So it's also, our, this technique has also pluses and also minuses. If I am giving a shock strike, imagine that I'm striking at the eye, also the reaction of his bad body, if I'm near him, it will be to clinch the fist, to contract himself, and it's possible also to catch me by, I don't know, the arms or my clothes or something else, yeah? So you must also have in mind all these things, because if I'm closing the distance, if I'm here, I'm making my technique, I am striking, then I need also to create distance, to use my my hands to use my blade in such a way that I can create after I'm making my techniques to create that distance that I need. So again, deploying, going with this hand that is liberating the t-shirt, going, hitting on the level of the face, coming, striking at the level of the eye, picking if I need to pick or going straight, then I'm already with my body in a very a good position for striking now on the level of the neck and uh, lacerating the jugular vein and the carotid artery. So faster. So the next drill is based on the same mechanic, on the same movement, also with the empty hand, also with the knife. But if at the first one you're hitting the, the eye, you are going to strike the eye, now you are going with the neck. The eye is a small zone, it's a very hard uh, target to be striked, to aim. You need a lot of training based on precision exercises to increase your precision and also a lot of luck if you will be in a real situation to hit that zone. It's going many cases, study cases where it was happening these victims that were stabbed in the eye, but it's requiring a lot of training. The neck, it's more bigger zone. When I say the neck, I'm not referring that I want to enter to lacerate the carotid artery as I show you in the first technique. I'm saying that I want to penetrate to trust that trachea. The trachea is here, the shock zone. If my target is here and I only give with open hands in the trachea or with a punch, or maybe you know in your life you were taking only a little bit of shock, you know the reaction that you go immediately and it's stopping you for a limited time in that from your action yeah but now imagine the knife the blade that is thrusting to your trachea so that will be a shock strike and that I want to make so what I'm doing the technique is the same I'm making for the deployment again like a principle close target not good idea to go directly on your knife remain uncovered yeah but like a principle to understand the complete drill i am here deploying my knife de uh, liberating the knife going with the hand on the blade on the knife and making the same 
movement from here and going on his face, trying his hand, is trying to hit him in such a way that his head is going on the back. Of course, if it's, you are already in a fighting position, he will be very stable and he will not be so easy to make this to his face. Yeah, But if you are very fast and you choose the right moment, this hand can create this and I'm not referring that how powerful it is. I need to open more the neck. I need to open more the zone that I'm striking. If my target is big like this, it will be much easier because already I can come with my blade in this position and enter in the, uh, in the neck because it's taller. But if it's smaller or like me, like the same uh, height, I must give that head to liberate more from the neck, so I'm coming with the blade. So what I'm doing, I'm taking the blade out, I'm in the, with it in the hand, I'm making the same movement, but putting his head, this is not moving, putting his head on the back, and in the same time, I'm coming with the blade at the level of the neck, yeah? So if I'm making faster, okay, of course, with moving. But only to show you the first part without moving here, deploying, catching, going back, going in with the blade. Yeah. If I am in, of course, depending on how I have the blade, I recommend to enter with the blade in this position, in the uh, on the uh, not so just a moment. I have here the blade, so not like this but in this kind of position because it's more thinner the blade so when i'm entering inside i can also make this movement so i am entering in the trachea penetrating thrust in the trachea but i can also slash so, um, i can also lacerate because as, as i say i remind you on the left and on the right you have the carotid arteries and you can lacerated if you are making this movement and your blade is very sharp so if i am here i am deploying going with the hand give it back entering inside the neck and making this kind of movement okay also moving after yeah? so i'm here Fast, one, two, strike, going immediately, neck, taking back, moving, creating distance. Again, the same concept. When I am hitting, when I am trusting and I want to enter in the trachea, thumb on the knife, on the top of the knife, like a stopper. Going up, taking the knife, giving his face back, again I repeat, it's not the idea that it's I only, I exaggerate now the movement that you understand. It will not happen like this, only if it will be very relaxed and you take it by surprise to happen this. Yeah, you rest, of course, it will have a movement more, it will be more stable, but this, it will help me a little bit.
and of course that this drill you can change also from different kind of positions if I'm here is the same thing going on the target I'm here here near the target the same idea pushing his head striking on the trahea taking the knife and creating distance of course here push on the head striking on the trahea dragging my blade towards me lacerating probably if again I repeat you have the sharp knife and have the correct movement you will lacerate also the carotid artery so we have two drills that are using the same movements yeah only that are on the other uh, zones that I decide to strike the first was that the weak hand is going like a strike on his face taking his vision for a fraction of a second when I'm coming with the blade choosing the face, the eye going directly or picking yeah, so one of it then in the same technique I was coming with the movement going in the neck and dragging, taking the blade towards me lacerating that carotid artery in the second one I'm making the same thing taking liberating the knife taking the knife striking but now it's a little bit more powerful and more up the strike like at the base of the nose in such a way that I can move his face on the back again I repeat in reality it will not happen this only if you are taken by surprise maybe so I'm moving I'm pushing in such a way that I liberate a little bit more the neck and I come with the same strike that it was on the eye but now I'm coming on the neck striking going in that trahea now the movement to take it back is the same like the first technique when I was entering in the neck and was I was lacerating that carotid artery now you must understand one concept if your blade has, if your knife has only one edge sharp, then of course, if I will enter in the neck, yeah, with this sharp edge towards the other direction, and I want to lacerate when I take back the carotid artery that is on the right in this situation, means that I cannot lacerate it because. I want to make this, I will make this movement with the part that is not sharp, so I will not lacerate it. So if I want to make it, I have only one edge, means that my blade must face in the exterior in such a way that I am entering in that trahea and when I'm taking back, the sharp edge is also lacerating the carotid artery. So you must understand this thing. Two techniques the same moves very simple as I say also in the past try to make drills your drills do not be complex try to identify different kind of moves that you make you can make for different activities if I have my handgun and I wear it in the appendix position it will be this movement catching the shore taking it up take my handgun aiming here if I have my blade is the same this hand is doing the same movement so my brain must not learn different kind of movements because it's the same movement here involved as I say if I was having the handgun here but the folding knife in the lateral means that for the handgun it's one movement for the folding knife that I have it in the rock pocket it's other movement but here is the same here I have one strike with the hand 
one coming on the eye, going on the neck, slashing. The same strike with the face, going back, going with the same strike but at the level of the neck, thrusting and then dragging the blade towards me and in lateral in such a way that I lacerate that carotid artery. So my brain must not learn different movements are the same it's the same mechanic, the same movement. I am in the same position, deploying, going on the eye, creating distance, but the movement is the same. I was not having other kind of strike, it's the same strike. Here is the same strike. Here, when I was coming on the eyes, this strike, when I was coming on the neck, the same strike. When I'm coming from here on the eye, is the same strike, yeah? It's not so in this position because my body is a little bit in diagonal now so I cannot strike fast like this, yeah? But it's the same way of striking. Here the same, I am, he I, I am here deploying, going, <coughs> going back. So I'm not changing nothing. Even if I'm striking to the uh, eye, even if I'm striking to the neck and going back, it's the same. Even if I'm close and I want to close the distance, the same. But the eye, the same. Yeah? So they are the same movements. And this is what is making a system efficient to not be complex. As I say, complex things will not work in a real situation. Keep it simple, keep it efficient. When we talk about the carotid artery, why I'm not choosing to give a slash? Give a slash and cut the carotid artery. Because that carotid artery that you have it on the right, right side on the left side, it's protected by a, by a group of muscle. And it's not so easy as you see in the movie. It's making this and it's lacerating the carotid artery. The carotid artery is more inside on your neck, more than the jugular vein. And as I say, the jugular vein is not the main aim, our main goal, because it's a blood vessel that has low pressure. So the artery I need to lacerate, it has high pressure, so he will lose the victim, he will lose a lot of blood very fast because it's circulating with a lot of pressure. So this that you see in the movie, or somebody is saying that is, you are making this and you are lacerated, it's more Hollywood, yeah. If you have, I don't know, a chirurgical scalpel and you are putting a lot of pressure and that is very, very, very sharp and you are giving with a lot of power, for sure it's possible to lacerate it. But with a normal knife, it's not so easy. Yeah? So this is the reason why when I enter in the neck, I need to enter inside and then making this yanking, this taking the blades towards me in the lateral in such a way that I lacerate it. I separate, I cut all the carotid artery. So the best way to make it, if I have here the target, it's by, if I have only one sharp edge to enter near the trachea with a sharp edge directed in exterior and I enter in the trachea or near the trachea, in the lateral of the trachea and then my movement it will be to make this, so I am entering deep and then take it towards me because like this in this moment when I make this movement I will lacerate and cut the carotid artery. So this is a better way of doing it. Or going in the lateral of the neck, very deep, and make the same movement. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoy the content. Don't forget if you have other ideas about other topics that you want me to make videos about it, let it in the section below. 
train until next time and implement in your training these kind of drills that I uh, showing you analyze them and try to understand why you must make this kind of drills don't repeat something mechanically and automatic because it will not help you stay safe and train smart